So this patient is coming in for evaluation of a uh, ulcerated area in the back of his heel. He had caught this maybe a month or so ago on a screen and it's just not healing properly. And then if you pan up this way, you can see there's another area here where again, he had just nicked it and it's just not properly healing. The big message is when you see an area like this that's not healing, especially in conjunction with this, you should automatically start to think that there's some type of vascular problem here. Um, and sure enough, on history, he also sees a vascular surgeon once a year. Um, no one sees a vascular surgeon once a year for nothing. Um, so he all obviously has an element of peripheral vascular disease, and it turns out he's also diabetic, which is a vasculitic sort of syndrome as well. Um, does that hurt when I do that? No, a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, so he has no freezing in place right now. We're going to try and just debride this tissue, um, sort of take this dead tissue off. And the reason why we do that is in order for tissues to heal, healthy tissue has to migrate across this surface. If you have callus build up here, or if this eschar is too thick, it won't be able to do that. And we have to take that down um, so that that can actually heal properly. So we can do a, a manual debridement. Debridement just refers to the removal of a dead tissue. Um, but then you can also use specific creams um, that'll actually help us with that as well. So I'm just gonna see if we can take this down. No pain when I do that? Uh, a little bit. Like on a scale of one to 10? Is that a two? Is that a four? Is that a six? Uh, almost nothing, but a little bit. Okay. I feel it a little bit, but... You're aware of pressure? Yeah. So again, the reason why typically you can take down thickened callus tissue, and it's not usually uncomfortable. So I'm not doing that to be cruel, but especially with diabetics, usually this is tolerable, and the freezing is much worse than just taking this down. So I'm working with a new Dr. John today. Hello. Um, this is a baby Dr. John. He's just starting. So how much debridement would you think I would do? Like, what's too much? If it starts to bleed, have I gone too far? Huh? No, I'm just asking the resident a question. Oh, oh okay. But you're welcome to answer too if you'd like. <laughs> if it's bleeding a lot. Yeah, I would tell you if it's bleeding a lot, we've probably gone too far with things. But don't be afraid. Like, if it's just, you know, um, speckling a little bit, that's okay. Healthy wound beds that are that are moist are a good thing for us. So generally, if you, if you're not used to debriding, you're probably wanting to take more than less, because the more you can get healthy tissue coming across, the better off you are. That hurts a little bit. So again, on a scale of one to ten, what is that? Is uh, that nine? <laughs> a nine? Okay, so I'll leave that alone. So and what that would push me towards too is there's different oh, types of ulcerations. Uh, no pain, yeah. That pain. So again, how high is that? Is that pain? Fine. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was gonna say you're <laughs> you're in good spirits for a ten. I am no worry. But to his point, so when I'm pulling on the tissues, he's feeling oh, that there. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's what I'm saying to you. So I just want to take down the dead tissue. I have to love. So I don't want to cause him unnecessary discomfort. So once I get this tissue off. In my country over there, every, my uncle, everybody is doctor. You know, every single time. Yeah, I, I, I have been doctor in family. I imagine. Yeah. And I, oh, that's my phone. My wife, uh, my dog, my Here, Dr. John, why don't you bring in his phone? No, 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 don't worry. So as much as possible, I want to smooth out the skin. How many kids do you have? Uh, I have only my daughter and my son, both married. I have two granddaughters, one 13 months, 17 months. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah, that's... Just that's Yeah, I'm not going to be playing with that yeah. much. I'm just trying to take a little bit Can off. Can I talk just a little bit with daughter? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Hey, it's a miracle. See, that border is what I want to be taking it off. Thank you for That's okay. See, that's what we want to get off. And I want to, as long as I'm not moving this, is when I'm shifting it that he's having discomfort. So we should be able to just smooth that out. 
And so you're you're always left with a with decision here about mm -hmm. if he's if it's too uncomfortable. That should push you towards two angles. One is mm -hmm. looking at the overall diagnosis and seeing if we're correct. So my point being is there's also, there's decubitus ulcers, there's arterial ulcers, there's vascular ulcers, there's venous ulcers. Which ones are more painful, venous ulcers or arterial ulcers? I would say arterial because of the pressure for the blood flow. Yeah, arterial ulcer is more, much more uncomfortable. They typically don't look like much, but patients are really, really uncomfortable. This mm -hmm. looks more like a venous ulcer. Um, but how he's describing it makes you wonder, could there be an arterial component to that because he's so uncomfortable? And that's something we can determine once we get our imaging studies back and see what that looks like. But at this stage, I can still clean this off and allow the margins to come together. Mm -hmm. If this is too uncomfortable, I'll just... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'll leave that part alone and just see if I can get this off. What makes this look more like a venous ulcer? Um, one, the bed is more moist. It's a larger space, so usually arterial ulcers are typically smaller when they're just originating. Mm -hmm. So do you know of any autolytic debriders, any creams you could use? So once this is done, mm -hmm. what we're doing is manual debridement. So we're actually using the scalpel to take off dead skin. Mm -hmm. But there's actually creams that can do that as well. Mm. Do you know of any? Not yet. Which is fair. So And he's mm -hmm. just, just starting. So this Dr. John's like a week <laughs> with patients. Um, so there's something called Iodosorb, which is a very good product. There's Meta Honey, Meta Honey Aspartate. There's different products like that, and they're designed to recognize um, dead tissue and slough it off. And that's called a chemical debridement or autolytic debrider. Mm. And when you combine that with other products to see if it'll help this heal. So beyond that, you can tell how this is, it's a little bit um, moist at the edges. Mm -hmm. So sometimes these weep a little bit. Is that too uncomfortable? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Just cream. Who give me, doctor? You see. Yeah, so we'll check and see. So he saw his orthopedic uh, oh, surgeon. Pain, pain, pain. Yeah, lots of pain. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. so I may not be able to put, touch that much. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Is that that skin oh, on the top too? Yeah. yeah, if I can. So if, mm -hmm. like I said, if he's, I'm not going to do him this much because if it's too uncomfortable, I'm not. The more we could remove of this, the better we'll do. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, I'm just going to just play a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so the reason why I'm reticent, so injecting anesthetic is uh, certainly an option here, but anesthetic into deep tissues with lots of muscle is uh, painful, quite painful. So this is an area that if I can't just debride this manually, I'll just use the cream, the autolytic debriders, that'll actually soften this up. And then when we see it in follow-up, we can actually slough this off. Because this eschar that's here, this has to come off. So if I didn't feel we had, or the product wasn't taking it off, then I'd be committed to sort of say specifically that I'm going to freeze this up and I'm going to take it off. But I think we'll be able to get there using the chemicals. Mm -hmm. Is that okay there? Uh, yeah, a little bit pain, but it's okay, I can take See how rough that is? Mm. This is what I was talking about. The, the normal cellular matrix, healthy skin trying to grow across this, will never be able to grow across this. And this is why if you don't take this down, it's never gonna heal. So this is why these sort of lesions, if you don't recognize them for what they are, and you don't put the right product on it, these can last just like he's coming to see us after this has been a month. You'll see patients who have been months and months and potentially even years, and they've just gotten used to the fact that they have atypical growth along the back of their heel, the front of their foot, whatever the case may be. And now he's will it, would an injury like this make uh -huh. his heel more prone to infection? Uh, not so much, because mm. usually the open, they, they, they look awful. I'm almost done. Okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. oh. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave that there because I don't want to be too uncomfortable. But that makes me wonder too about arterial components because again, not only um, 
from an age perspective, this, I wouldn't expect to be this uncomfortable, but also he's diabetic. So mm -hmm. the fact that it's this uncomfortable would push us towards, you know, could this be some degree of an arterial component? So I'm gonna leave this alone. What we're gonna use now is what I was getting to before. We're gonna put a substance on this that will actually encourage us to slough. And if it's weeping a lot, there's products that are derived from seaweed, alginates, mm. that we put on top of that to absorb that. And then we put something on top of that, usually a silicone derivative. Mm -hmm. Here in Canada, we have something called um, um, a leave in light, which I like, which actually sits on there and will actually work well for that. And then this one, I'm just gonna pare down a little bit and see how he tolerates that. And then we'll go from there. You could channel your inner Dr. Jane or Dr. John over on Dr. Butler's Patreon. We have lots of quiz questions that come out almost every Monday, walking you through different ethical dilemmas or identifying different lesions so that you can play along and learn a bit more. For exclusive content and to participate in discussions like this, please head over to Dr. Butler's Patreon page. You'll see the link in the caption as well as in his bio.